Ever since 2015, the Jurassic Park franchise has expanded itself with a wide variety of new stories surrounding the once fully functional park known as Jurassic World. And among those stories happens to be two, but soon to be three feature films, a short film, a spin-off novel, and an animated series that's been released on Netflix. Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous tells the story of what happened during and after the fall of Jurassic World, but is now expanding far beyond even that, with its latest season spanning into areas of the lore that are pretty important for the franchise in general. So with all that being said, this is my personal review on what they've been doing and what I think about it so far. Here are my thoughts on Season 3 of the animated Jurassic show set directly before and technically even during the events of Fallen Kingdom. <laughs> Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. So, the newest episodes of Camp Cretaceous have officially come out, and just like the last two seasons so far, the majority of the fan base and audiences in general seem to really be liking it. And I myself happen to be one of those people, because after watching the 10 most recent episodes of the show, I've gotta say that it's only gotten better as time has gone along. And even though I walked away from season two feeling a bit underwhelmed with some of the silliness that was going on, season three grounds itself in a much more entertaining way by going dark darker in both story and visual tone. It does this by bringing in things like E750, the new hybrid dinosaur everyone had been speculating on for the last few months, as well as incorporating more dinosaur chase scenes and mercenaries getting eaten with some stuff directly inspired wholeheartedly from part 5 of the Jurassic Park series, Fallen Kingdom. Now that's not to say that everything was perfect in this season, because obviously anything like this is going to have both its ups and downs. There were a few times where we went into the old Jurassic Park visitor Center, and I noticed that continuity with what had happened in Jurassic World or even Fallen Kingdom itself weren't exactly as spot on as I think they should be. But then again, this show does seem to purposefully adapt scenes that we've seen in the two most recent films to animation in ways that are pretty similar to how we saw them in live action, but not necessarily exactly the way they went down. So I think in general, some of that stuff can be waved away as long as you understand that this is a different medium. Personally, I do wish they'd give more attention to something like the Rex Skull being destroyed in Jurassic World, not being there in events that happened far later, but hey man, it's just the way these things are. Still, Season 3 of Camp Cretaceous offered up a lot more positives than negatives in my opinion, and I not only think it exceeds Season 2 in quality, but also the short film Battle at Big Rock and even the first season of Camp Cretaceous as well. The characters not only are can show compelling growth, but they also don't do anything outrageously stupid like what you'll find in some other material that the Jurassic series has historically been known to produce every now and then. This is, in my opinion, pretty close to being a solid Jurassic Park experience that is just short of being as good as some of the films. And with its popularity still rising, I think it's safe to say that people have embraced this as something of an important piece of the story in a similar way to something like The Clone Wars, for lack of a better comparison. Now, if you don't want anything from this season spoiled for you, I'd suggest not watching any further, because I'm about to go into detail about everything I thought about for the show full stop from here on out. So yeah, if you don't want to know anything specific, you've been warned. Starting up first, I want to talk about the return of the original 1993 park and why I think this show actually did a really good service to the Visitor Center and original movie, even though I wish we got to see that dead raptor trapped in the freezer from the first film, but oh well, too late to happen now. So during the events of season three, Jurassic Park has actually become the territory of both a pack of wild compies as well as Blue the Velociraptor herself. And actually seeing the raptor hunt down one of the compies and attack the campers made for some pretty fun scenes and what was definitely a highlight of the show for me. Towards the end of the season, the two hybrid dinosaurs known as Scorpius Rexes begin to not only attack the humans and Blue, but also each other in what eventually leads to the destruction and fall of the most iconic location from Jurassic Park. It didn't burn down and any fire like I thought it would, but it did get destroyed nonetheless, and I loved every second of it, particularly the moment where one of the characters references the Michael Crichton book by describing John Hammond's death being the result of him falling down a hill and getting killed by compies, which is of course corrected as being untrue and that the billionaire died of natural causes, but it's also given a fun little joke where the character says they quote, read it somewhere, which of course is something that I'm sure hardcore fans everywhere are gonna love. Speaking of the original Jurassic Park and the Scorpion 
Mobius Rex battle that takes place in it, I have to say that both the reveal of there being two hybrids, as well as the way they were executed in the show, was very, very good. Now, personally, I don't really care much for the design of the animal overall, especially the skull, but there has been a lot of people making the connection to its look and that of the abandoned Jurassic Park 4 concept art for some of the more monstrous human-dino hybrid creations. Now, E750 isn't a human-dino hybrid at all, but it does get its name from having been spliced with a scorpion fish, which gave it those venomous abilities and made it look kind of like some of that concept art. All of that I thought was very cool, as well as the way in which the dinosaur was able to reproduce and create more problems for the survivors on the island. That was a very JP1 amphibian DNA aspect of its lore that I think blended in very well to the series history. Other dinosaurs that got their debuts in Season 3 include the Monolophosaurus as well as the Oranosaurus, both of which I thought were really well done and served a great purpose for those obviously necessary scenes of dinosaur action. The Monolophosaurus in particular I thought had a great behavioral range with them being quite docile alone but go ravenous quite quickly while in a group. Oranosaurus I also thought was designed and handled extremely well, with their scenes reminding me visually of something of a mix between the birdcage sequence from Jurassic Park 3, as well as the worker village attack in The Lost World. Only seeing herbivores do that kind of stuff is pretty unique and not very well explored in the Jurassic series as a whole, so it added for some fun originality as well. Now, the characters themselves underwent probably the most development over anything else in the show, and that includes story in my opinion, because while you're basically just getting another few episodes of people running from dinosaurs on an island, the characters themselves actually do evolve and change, and all of them, every single one in my opinion, have become likable and far less annoying than ever before. It's still not exactly what I'd call as serious as the live-action films, but hey, for an animated series, this is actually pretty great stuff. Every one of them in the show, I felt, had a genuine arc and story of their own that was leaps and bounds better than what I'd seen before, particularly Ben, who I think has come a very long way since his early episodes. This was all done as well as it could have been, and in my opinion, better. This was high quality animated series Jurassic Park stuff. Now, the incorporation of Dr. Wu was another surprise towards the end of the season that I thought was a slam dunk as well. Having the events of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom line up perfectly with the end of these episodes was super exciting. And as soon as you hear the words Marine One and Close the Gate spoken out in the distance, you know you're in for a retelling of what many audience members have claimed to be one of the greatest Jurassic Park opening scenes in the entire series history. And it was pretty awesome in my opinion. Everything about the utilization of the T-Rex, how it killed people, the larger role of that island mission and Dr. Wu's incorporation into those events was excellently handled, and to see the prequel story of his work to create the Indoraptor made it even more enjoyable for me. Eli Mills, the murderous villain of Fallen Kingdom, is even mentioned by name, which means Dr. Wu had been working with him just six months after the fall of the theme park. So I guess this gives way more credence to the theory that the Lockwood estate was where Hoskins had planned for Wu to meet up at once the fourth film had ended. Season three of Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous is the best the series has been so far in my personal opinion. It's got really fun action, an expansion of the wider lore that ties into the films, and it even gave the original theme park from 1993 a send-off that I think will satisfy those of us who grew up loving that location and movie. It's not as good as Jurassic Park 1. No, of course not. But I do think it's genuinely a solid entry into the franchise expanded lore and serves up what I think is a very fun ride. While Camp Cretaceous was previously something that I thought was among the lesser stories within the Jurassic world portion of the series, more than likely because of my thoughts on season two, I gotta say that season three is one of the coolest Jurassic Park things I've seen outside of the films. I like it more than Battle at Big Rock and the first two seasons of the show, and I think it's actually a better entry with more sophisticated lore and necessary belonging in the series than Jurassic Park 3. If I had to rate it out of 10, I'd probably give it something like a 9 for a TV show, but hey, that's all subject to change and nitpicky stuff. Anyways, these are all just my own first viewing thoughts and opinions on the subject matter. I had a great time with the show, and I think a lot of other fans, well, I know a lot of other fans also did, but I think the more people see this, the more they're going to really like it. Now. Whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below.
Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my in-gen executives. I'd also like to thank all of my parkers and in-gen hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing me again. See you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.